Hi, Galia. It's really a pleasure to be uh, speaking with you today. Um, I always think about your practice and your teaching as bringing things together. Um, whether, you know, bringing um, the social uh, and, and the artistic or the high and the low or the north and the south. And um, I'm very kind of curious uh, or, or wanting to ask you more about how this um, this impacts how you think about practice and you've constructed uh, your own approach to both um, architecture and teaching. Things that we think as opposites, you know, art and social, uh, elite and expression, uh, popular and, and elite, and, and also virtual and physical. Uh, right now, so the, the idea is always like, if a new medium comes into play, let's say photography, then painting may die. And so in the 1900s, people would make the case that photography would displace art and painting. What happened is actually the contrary. With the advent of photography, art and painting in particular exploded. We did not have a, it flourished and we have not had a moment more prolific in the art world. Uh, as after 1920. And so what I would say is that this moment, and as I prepare the class for, I prepare the seminar for art and social infrastructure, uh, the virtual actually will make the physical more relevant. Uh, we will have mo much more offers that are virtual, but the moments in which we meet in a seminar will be even more precious than they are. People will have, uh, will make an effort to go to a seminar and meet in a group where you have 12 people or 20. And so what I predict, um, predict is never a good word, but what I see is um, a reevaluating of those interest and the word reevaluating it's very important to me because i'm teaching about values and i think that one of the things that we architects do is materialize the values of the time and so i think that uh, my relationship with the art world um, it's not from the point of view of art as an elite thing but art as a value for all of us and the reason why the art world has exploded in the last 20 30 years it's because it's one of the mediums where more people communicate in and so it's in a, in a network society where people come to it from different backgrounds from different languages from different ideologies art it's still something that builds up consensus and so it's re teaching is really about um, updating myself in the consensus of the moment. And, and, and what's great about Galia, your, your sort of, you know, contribution, endless contribution, you know, to GSAP and the school is this kind of dialogue that you've created um, between your practice and, and your teaching and this feedback loop, uh, which, uh, it's been incredibly uh, enriching to to see grow and expand, and you know, as you've built uh, more and more and designed more and more, you know, for the art world or or art um, collectors, etc., moving increasingly in the public realm uh, with your own practice, and and uh, and how you've brought these questions to bear um, upon your studios and your seminars. And so, one question that I have for you, because. I do feel like you are a sort of, you know, pioneer in your practice in the sense that you've always, one, I think, reflect on how you work, how architects work. You, you have the sense of always taking a step back and, and, and sort of designing your practice. I, I, I think of you as someone who has constantly made choices in terms of the kinds of practice that you want to have, and, and you bring those questions to the students. And so, Two questions. One is, um, where are you taking your own practice and what are you excited about? And then in relation to that, uh, where do you think practice might be going for the next generation of students and 
you know, what is exciting for you to imagine uh, in light also of what you just said, the, the physical is not, is more, is craved more than ever right now. Exactly. So I think of practice as uh, opposite to um, size. It's not, it's not about how big anything is, is how intricate it is, how, how you are connected to it. And so I could not imagine teaching if I was not a practicing architect because uh, that's, that's the medium in which I express the bulk of uh, my interest. And, 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 and so you're right, I designed the office to fit a way of being and a set of values that are with me and it has shifted. Uh, uh, over the years from working with artists to working with collectors to working with institutions to designing uh, exhibitions to design now museums and things like that. Um, but it's not about whether, let's say, a children's museum for that it's for thousands of people a day uh, in the middle of Manhattan, um, 80,000 square feet. It's not about the size of that versus an exhibition of a, a marginal artist um, from Paraguay in a museum of uh, American society, for example. It's not about size. It's about the connection and the intricacy of the relationship of that particular thing and the values of that particular thing and the way it communicate to other uh, people. And so uh, for me, there's no distinction between urban architectural or ergonomics or design. It's all within the spectrum. And so it could be a chair, uh, a bench in a public plaza, or it could be a reconsideration of a downtown of a city, uh, passing through the scale of residential architecture, passing through the scale of uh, institutional architecture. All of those things, landscape, environment, they all connect. They are all part of thinking and I, I feel like we have a repertoire of ideas, all and new. And it's also not about the latest idea. Some of the considerations that I'm putting forward now with my students and in my work are um, thousand year old ideas. You know, my interest of working with brick, uh, with bricks and masonry construction, you can trace that back to city and architecture, you know, uh, thousands of years ago, or Mayan architecture uh, thousands of years ago. Um, and it connects to Eladio Dieste in Uruguay 40 years ago. And so I think the idea of uh, past and present, big and small, intricate or large, uh, it, it's not, um, we are too used of thinking about dualities. And at this moment, it's about increasing the repertoire of ideas and increasing the spectrum of people working together. So I think another thing that we are very strong at Columbia is at the sense of working as a team and not as a kind of, a, a, you know, the, the visionary architect. We are, we are like a team school and we have been a team school for a while. And the last thing that I want to ask is, so you, you went to Colombia. Actually, I remember you talking about your brick project, uh, you know, very early on. I think what you you had just graduated, so I, I I love that you're coming back to that and and that uh, the life of an architect as a practice is a kind of a sort of spiral. Um, what about New York? I mean, you're an unbelievably cosmopolitan, you know, person, and uh, uh, and uh, do you think New York is still important? Do you think learning coming to New York to be in an architecture school is important. Like, what, how do you think the, the, the city figures uh, at GSAP and in, in the way that you teach, for example? Uh, absolutely. I think that um, the intricacy of connections in New York cannot be replicated um, someplace else. Uh, I, with, the, uh, with the spread of the virus, I have been receiving uh, emails from people that live in rural Argentina, three hours away from the closest airport. Like I have cousins that are doctors and, and pharmacists and teachers in uh, 
Hernandarias or Roldan, three hours from an airport, five hours from an airport, and they have two cases of coronavirus in a town of, you know, very far away. And so I think even though the network is super extensive and super connected and intricate, the node of connections that happen here in New York and the intensity of discussions and the ability of uh, you know, gathering that data that happens somewhere else and then immediately putting it in context with ELAS, for example, the Institute of Latin American Studies, sending that to them, connecting to people. Uh, and so I think whether it's in architecture or whether it's in um, international affairs or whether it's in law, uh, being in New York, uh, we can talk together online here, and it feels like you would have to ex scream, uh, you know, for days in uh, faraway places to be heard. So I, I think here it just takes like that, and and things get connected immediately. And so I think that it will be uh, New York will have a comeback. It will definitely go a couple of steps back and then forward. Uh, but I don't, um, I've been here, I've been here through the 1988 crisis, 9-11, um, uh, Superstorm Sandy, the 2008 crisis, and, uh, and every time um, I have been in New York again and it has come back um, stronger. And so I, I, I think that it, um, we are going to be hit very strong right now, but it will, we will come back um, and we will be relevant again. Galia, thanks so much for, you know, your optimism and, but also your perspective. I really feel like you bring an amazing perspective to the school and to the students. And uh, I'm very excited to be together again in the fall and to imagine come back over and over again as stronger um, as we think about how we're going to live uh, in the future. Thank you so much, Galia. Thank you, Amal. Have a good time. Yes. Bye-bye.